And so it came to pass that the day was to be saved by the most unlikeliest of heroes, a small child unwillingly thrust into the workforce. One disaster after another had been diverted due to her diligent and cunning decision-making. With the kingdom on the verge of knowing everlasting peace and prosperity, our hero could finally rest their weary head, but only after one more critical decision was to be made. A decision of great weight, a decision of immense importance, a decision that could possibly kill hundreds, even thousands of people. Oh my God, you've made the wrong choice. You didn't think things through. You've doomed us all. Everything's on fire now. We're all covered in fire. How could you have done this to us? Lil. Lil. What? Oh, Dad, I was... Oh, I must have been having a nightmare. It's over now, sweetie. But since you're awake, I think it's time you and I had the talk. Out of one nightmare and into another. Sweetie, there comes a time in every young person's life... Well, Dad, you don't have to do this. When they have to work their dad's shift at the guard shed while he places a bet on the goblin ball match down at the pub. Aw, oh, Dad, do I have to? Today was the day I was going to start off on a grand adventure with my friends. I want to sail the open sea. I want to fight ogres. I... I want to throw rocks at things. You think I didn't want to throw rocks at things when I was your age? But I had a duty. I had a responsibility. I had to work at the guard shed while my dad placed a bet at the goblin ball match down at the pub. Did he ever win anything? Do you think we'd be stuck here if he did? But I'm 12. Won't we get in trouble? Not if we don't get caught. Come on. I'll show you how to handle anything that comes up. Okie dokie. Ready for me to very quickly show you how everything works? Oh good. Everyone loves a tutorial. No time for a full rundown, so I'll sum it up like this. The key thing to remember when being a castle guardsman is... Dad! Someone's coming! What do we do? Uh, okay. I guess the best way to learn is by doing. Let's just hope there's someone completely plain and boring. Good morning, Mrs. Abernathy. How's your day today? Plain and boring, as always. Bingo. Would you mind if Lil looks after you? Oh, not at all. It's always a pleasure to see your daughter, Shamish. It's Hamish. What is? Never mind. Now, Lil, when a visitor approaches the guard shed, they'll generally start by stating their business. I'd like to state my business. I bring a basket of baked goods to my son and his family once a week. Oh, would you like one? After they state their business, it's pretty much your call what to do next. You can select them and interrogate them. There's tools, the phone there on the wall. You only get three action points. You get it, right? Not really. What do we need tools for? 
You can pick one and it does something. Come on, Lil. I've really got to speed this along. The Goblin Ball game is about to start. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm inconveniencing you? Oh, no, not at all, dear. I don't mind helping out. But the princess is really gigging the ceremonial for a slingshot. <gasps> she is? Sweet jumping jitters, we gotta get to that game. Let's wrap this up, dear. Seamus, tell the girl what to do. The name is Hamish. No, it's Mrs. Abernathy. I already told you, selecting the person means you interrogate them and hear more of their story. It's the best way to find out someone's true intentions. Sometimes. Sometimes? Sometimes using a tool will do the job better, or the phone, or it's a combination of things. I don't know, you can spend all three action points just interrogating them for all I care. Didn't we cover this? That's your inventory bag where you keep the things people give you or that you confiscate from them. In other words, your sweet, sweet loot. Looking in your bag for something to use doesn't cost you an action point. You use the Wicked 3000 to make the big decision to let someone in or send them packing. Choosing this will end the tutorial. Can I finally get out of here? Feeling stuck? This phone is for calling the royal advisors and asking for their help, but all they'll really give you is their opinion. You can get a hold of Lieutenant Stryker, Captain of the Guards, and technically our boss. Hello? Who's there? Or First Councilwoman Ash, the head bureaucrat of the Sprawl, with a real mind for politics. This is Councilwoman Ash. Hello? Hello, is somebody there? And finally, the Royal Jester Malcolm, chaos personified in human form. Hello, you've reached Malcolm. Please leave a message after the goose honk. Hey, where'd the goose go? Well, chase after it, for goodness sake! Each call costs an action point. Our tools. If you want to use a tool, you have to make sure it has a crystal to charge it. Here, I'll show you. I'll add today's crystals to the tools that don't have any. That way I have a well-rounded arsenal. Why do the other tools already have crystals in them? I carry them over from previous days. Any other questions? Why does a bullwhip need to be powered by crystals? No more questions. You can use this decoder ring to decode things. Not exactly sure how it works. The instructions were written in some kind of code. It's a metal detector. You figure it out. Truth spray. You spray it and they tell the truth. Honestly, that's what it does. This x-ray scanner can see through most types of clothing, flesh, and bone. It uses low-grade radiation. Do not use on trolls. <laughs> no humming.
You use the Wicked 3000 to make the big decision to let someone in or send them. Now you can choose to use the Wicked 3000 at any point during a turn. But sometimes it's better to use up all three action points to find out everything you can, by any means necessary. Sometimes? Yeah, and sometimes people are in a really big hurry, like I am right now, so just pick a damn lever already. Great job, Lil. Your mother would be so proud to see you now. After my delivery, I'm off to watch the big game. Got my grandson's inheritance riding on a tip that the Stapleford Snughorns are gonna win it today. Here's a tip. Never lend Mrs. Abernathy money to bet with. Let's hurry along to the game. We don't want to be late, do we, Hamish? My name is Shamish. No, wait, it's not. Oh, I better go. Time to put on your big kid pants. You can do this. More like I'm being forced to do this. It's only for today, I swear. Come meet me in the tavern when the shift is over. Good luck. Good luck with your illegal gambling. I don't need luck. Believe me, he does. Okay, Lil, you got this. Charmed to make your acquaintance, young Gateminder. I am Tyronius Athanatos, son of Brielle and Darunia Athanatos. I have been summoned to deliver the keynote speech at the Festival of Magical Freedom tonight, hosted by the Mages Guild. Will you require anything further? The House of Thanatos, and indeed the entire Mages Guild, thank you, young guardian. You will go far. Good afternoon. I am here to pick up my two kids from the no-good, stingy, low-life of a father who happens to be my lying, cheating, low-life of an ex-husband, Orlando. His address is there on this incomprehensible, illegible letter my kids sent me. Believe me, I would love to have him get off his sorry butt and bring them to me for once. It 
was his week with them. No, I'm sorry. It was his and his new girlfriend Callie's week with them. And do you want to know what the kids say about her? They say she's fun. I'm sure the letter they wrote is all about her. Can't decode it to save my life, though. My kid's writing is so lousy. Kelly probably isn't actually fun. She's probably just younger. Exactly. She's actually closer to your age than she is mine. And now I've made myself sad. I don't know how to tell you this, but there's more to this letter than meets the eye. There's a hidden message written here. It says, come son, mommy, Kelly is nightmare. Does that make sense to you? Oh my God, my boys don't know how to spell. But also that thing about Kelly being the worst. Good luck! What in the bloody blazing blasted hell is the hold-up? Why have we stopped, Welp? Well, sir, the guard. Silence! Speak when spoken to, or you'll get the whip. Welp. Yes, sir. Now, you, child, let me pass. I have important business to attend to. Come on, shake a leg. B.S. waits for no man. B.S.? Bank of the Sprawl. Well, that's unfortunate. What kind of business do you have at the bank today, sir? I shan't be hearing the details of my B.S. appointment with some nosy little brat tending the gate. Mind your business or you'll get the whip, child! I don't think you're allowed to not tell me what your business is. Insolence! But sir, it's only a deposit. One more outburst and it will be back in the cage with you. Silence! Yes, it is gold, but it is legitimate. Certainly not blood gold, if that's what you were thinking. Well, I wasn't before you said anything. Everything seems to be in order. 
But I wonder what that stamp was on the gold bars. Now, since you are finished rifling through my personal belongings, you insufferable, petty little monster, let me pass. It's about bloody time. Get moving, whelp. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Silence. Nobody was talking to you. All due respect, sir, but you were talking to me. Don't be impertinent. Onward! Come to the sprawl to participate in capitalism. After years on the road as a traveling merchant, I'm finally ready to put down roots. And what better place than the sprawling metropolis of the sprawl? Huh, <laughs> I just got that. Garby Bunches is the name. Garby Bunches? <laughs> Funny name. But that's gotta be made up. I'm gonna have to see some documentation. Can't fault you for doing your due diligence. Here's my vendor's license, issued by the Sprawl Board of Trade. He's right. Everything is in order. I just can't wait to get in the mix and figure out what kind of merchant this place really needs. Since I was a boy selling lemonade, when life literally gave me lemons, I've dreamed of maximizing profits and keeping overhead low. Seems like a weird dream for a kid to have. You couldn't possibly understand, little girl, with your cushy government job. Wait, shouldn't you be in school or off playing or something? Don't ask. See, you get it. Once I've set up shop selling, well, whatever I decide to sell, I'll be sure to give you a discount. I look forward to buying... Uh, something. This is far below my pay grade, but give me a moment to confirm his vendor's license. Are you still there? Ah, yes, Garby Bunches. I've got him right here on the list. He may enter. Ta-ta! <laughs> Garby Bunches. Funny name. He doesn't sound like any sort of security threat. I'm not sure why you called me. You're right. Bye.
Can you smell that? The trash barge? Yeah, it comes through on the weekends. The smell only lingers for a couple of days. Not the reek of filth and decay. That's the reek of opportunity. See you around. Oh my, were you left behind? The last group of school children departed hours ago. Feel free to wait in the lost and found box until someone comes to collect you. No, you called me. I'm Lil, we spoke on the phone. I was covering for my dad at the South Gate. Ah, uh, of course, Lil, yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but no, this is highly irregular. But then again, you'll have to do, for the sake of time. Ha, <laughs> sake of time. <laughs> do you get it? No. Trust me, you will. Who are you again? Dr. Marquess Beatrix von Matterhorn, head of archaeological research at the Royal Academy. But you can call me B. Gotcha. And what's so great about this place? Would you like the long or short version? Hit me with some of that sweet exposition, baby. This place is known as the dig site. How creative. We stand at the site upon which power crystals were first discovered. The power crystals that I used for the tools in the guard shed? Those and every other technological marvel of our lifetimes. The power crystal was discovered completely by accident. 80 years ago, on this site, an iconic dwarven heavy metal band performed to celebrate the coronation of Princess Desdemona's grandfather, King Artemis. 
At the moment of a particularly rumpus drum solo, the vibrations opened up a chasm swallowing the entire stage and the musicians and a few dozen enthusiastic fans. Legend says the band emerged from the chasm adorned in the glowing magical rocks, or what we know as power crystals today. That must have looked awesome! Very awesome, but there's more. Whether by fate or the actions of an inebriated mage, the bass player was struck by a lightning bolt, and the crystals in her cape and beard absorbed the electric discharge. Everything that previously relied on magic within a five-mile radius lit up and was charged for weeks. Hardcore! Very hardcore. A massive industry sprung up and developed the multitudes of ways we use power crystals, which ushered in an unprecedented era of prosperity for the sprawl, making our city-state the world power it is today. Gotcha. But what does this have to do with me? I am the preeminent expert in the advanced properties of power crystals, and my research suggests we have barely scratched the surface of what these puppies can do. Okay, but again, what does this have to do with me? Lil, I have found how to harness the crystal's power to alter the very fabric of time. May I present the Chronometer 3000? And what I need to know from you is, do you know anyone who would be willing to go on what some might call an adventure? Oh, me! Me, me, me! I want to go on an adventure! Wonderful. But before you go off and start pushing buttons willy-nilly, let me explain how I came across this incredible new discovery. Or more, exposition, as you might say. You see, by transmuting the crystal's more raw and ethereal properties and tethering it to a gnomish astrolab, they can produce temporal anomalies. We began experimenting by fashioning teeny tiny harnesses and attaching the crystals to mice and directing radio signals towards them. We perfected the process and found that we could send these mice back minutes, hours, even a full day with a less than 13% fatality rate. Blah blah microscope, blah blah live chicken, blah 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 resonance chamber, blah. Beatrix von Matterhorn calling. Who may I ask am I speaking to? Check this out. You were about to tell me you need a gate guard to come down to the dig site, right? My word, you gate guards are intuitive. I hope they're paying you a more than fair wage. They probably aren't, the way my dad complains about it. She hung up. Again. Why, hello there. I've come to the Sprawl to participate in capitalism. After years on the road as a... Let me stop you there. Your name is Grabby Blanchers, right? You're a traveling merchant or something? Oh, I see my reputation precedes me. Kind of. The name is Garvey Bunches. This is so weird. I swear I already dealt with this guy. I can either do the same thing as I did last time, or, or maybe this is a chance to try something different. 
I'm sorry. Are you talking to me? That's what I'm trying to decide, Garbs. Regardless, here's my vendor license issued by the Sprawl Board of Trade for confirmation. He's right. Everything is in order. I need to get this guy processed and get my butt back to the dig site. I've done this already. I remember pulling the lever. Can you smell that? I think then you said something about opportunity. You got it. See you around. I need to get back to the dig site to figure out what just happened. Oh, Lil, from the phone call earlier, of course. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, but no, this is highly irregular. But then again, you'll have to do for the sake of time. Ha! Huh, sake of time. Do you get it? I already told you no. Oh, wait, I actually do. My name is Dr. Marquess Beatrix von Matterhorn, head of archaeological... Logical research at the Royalty School for Smart People. You said I can call you Trixie. We've been through this before. I'd prefer if you called me B. And this is the site where power crystals were first discovered and you used them to make a time machine. Then you baited me with promises of adventure and pretty much forced me to push the big shiny button on your silly little time machine and now I'm pretty sure I'm just traveled back through time and I'm kind of freaking out here. Any questions? Wait, why am I asking you questions? For any of this to be possible, it would require the use of my newly crafted device. May I present the Chronometer 3000? Wait, where did it go? Do you mean this? My invention! How did you get that? You gave it to me. Well, not really, but you were gonna give it to me, I think. You were in the middle of explaining. And you were seduced by the glowing red button. Can you blame me? Yes, but it is a good button. I'm just proud of myself that your particles weren't immediately dispersed to the furthest reaches of space and time. That risk becomes much lower once I configure it to your individual life source, which I will do now. At any rate, I think the castle gate is a perfect place to test my prototype, and I need a willing gate guard to use the device. And allow me to track their progress to make sure only the right people are permitted entry to the sprawl. Do you have any questions? right people. Individuals or groups that would improve the daily life of the inhabitants of the sprawl, rather than those who would see harm come to the community and castle. Isn't that subjective? Yes, well, I suppose it is, but recently the kingdom has seen a rise in rebellious factions, envious neighboring nations, not to mention the resentful mages guild since the power crystal has replaced most household magical applications. 
One wrong choice could trigger a domino effect that could lead to the fall of the sprawl. So to recap, you're giving me, a 12-year-old who worked exactly one day at the castle gate, the power to rewind time? Why not just use it yourself? I have been testing the device myself for months. In fact, I used it to repeat a month's worth of the same day and learn to play the oboe. Can I show you? Oh, well, perhaps another time. My calculations suggest that no changes I could make from my post at the Royal Academy would have nearly the impact on the sprawl that you gate guards do. Academia, am I right? <laughs> so I came to the conclusion that trying it out at the gate is a calculated risk worth taking. I think I get the idea, Dr. B. I'm ready to go out in the world and use this device properly, and definitely not to win the lottery or to repeatedly watch people trip and fall over and over again. You'd want that? With all that money, I could pay people to trip and fall over and over again. Regardless, you'll find you can't use it whenever or wherever you want. It is now calibrated, so it will only allow you to fold space and time when you are inside the guard shed. All right. Furthermore, by default, the device will automatically allow you to travel back to the start of your guard shift, including your loadout. However, I've hacked it a bit so that you can jump back to a specific point in the turn. Hack is the key word, though. I have to leave now. There is more science to be done. I will summon you soon, and we will see what else you might be ready for. Thank you, Lil. The world thanks you. No pressure. You can do this. Just try not to break space and time. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Maybe I should have mentioned I was only working the gate for one day. Oh well. It's getting pretty late. I should head home. Your dad's over there. Hey, hey, there she is, my hard-working angel face, sweetest of the sweetest daughter of mine. You didn't win your gambling, did you? No, but it wasn't my fault. The other team was just too good. But I didn't lose all my money. We still have left what I didn't bet, so...
That'll be 15 gold for the ale. And now we don't have any left. Hey, Lil, did you take any bribes or pickpocket anyone today? Sorry, nothing today. Oh, rats. Rats? Again? I mean, we don't have rats, I swear. No, not like that. Uh, oh, well. I'll go call my guy anyways. See if he'll front me the money to bet with. Wait, you'll never believe what happened. Right at the end of my shift, I got this phone call, okay? Asking me to come down to the dig site. Did you remember to lock up the shed? What? Yes. And turn off the light? Yes, I did. Whatever, just listen. You gotta make sure to turn off the light, Lil. They'll charge us for the overnight usage. I remember to turn off the light, I think. Anyways, Dad, I met this professor at the dig site, and she had this time machine, and when I touched the time machine, I went back in time. Then she gave me the time machine to use when I worked the guard shed for you, but it only works at the guard shed, so that was kind of a bummer. But it's super cool, and it only works for me. That's great, sweetie. I'm glad you liked covering for me today. But you don't have to make up stories just so you can work another shift. Wait, no, that's not what's happening. I... Anytime you want to be just like Daddy and work down at the guard shed, all you need to do is ask. Dad, you're not fully comprehending what I'm trying to tell you. Hey, Arda, did you hear? Lil's making up cute stories so she can be more like her old man. Oh, that's so sweet. I have the power to manipulate time and I demand to be taken seriously. Okay, okay, I understand. I can see that you're serious. Seriously adorable. But honestly, Lil, you can cover for me anytime you like. You're probably doing a better job than me anyways. This isn't how I expected it to go. Speaking of that, I better call my guy and make a bet on the next game. It's getting late. You better get upstairs to bed, Missy. Good night, Lil. Good night, Dad. Maybe someday you'll believe me. Good luck with your gambling. I don't need luck. Whew, I'm pooped. That's enough adventure for one day. I'm ready to hit the sack. 